using the words of the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, in economic terms, if you have two periods of negative growth, you are technically in recession. It is obvious then that Nigeria's economy is in recession. But the good news is that the country can come out of it stronger if its managers adopted the right policies. The program is Economic Search Light on Splash 105.5 FM, the Integrity Station. This edition of the program will feature the economist and popular columnist Henry Boyo. He will be looking at the sensible path to stronger Naira and economic prosperity. Dr. Andrew Iguema, the head of the Department of Economics, Imo State University, will also be on the program to suggest way out of Nigeria's present economic problems. I am Edmond Dobilo. Let's hit the ground running. All is not well with the Nigerian economy. It is going through recession. And in periods like this, purposeful countries take inspiration from the ones that have gone through periodic economic hardships and emerged out of them stronger. Iran is one of such countries. Having gone through severe economic sanctions imposed on it by the big powers, the country looked inward to mobilize its resources for sustainable development. Today, Iran is a success story and continues to make giant strides in the face of the instability in the Middle East. Recently, a delegation of Iranian business community led by that country's Minister of Foreign Affairs visited Nigeria. They were the guests of the president, whom they told that their mission in the country was to explore areas of collaboration and investing in sectors like banking, education, agriculture, energy, and technology development. During the visit, President Muhammad Buhari commended the achievement Iran has made in security, manufacturing, agriculture, technology, and nuclear research. Taking inspiration from the Iranian success, President Buhari said Nigeria is learning in a hard way to quickly explore sectors of the economy like gas, solid minerals, and agriculture for growth. One thing that is conversant with the world economy is recession. Countries go into recession and come out of it. The development trajectories of developed and developing economies show that periodically they come out of recession stronger by reason of the volatility caused by competing forces in the global economy. Recessions do occur. All that is left is for countries to apply the right measures to put their economies back on track. Countries like the United States of America, Germany and Japan might no longer be talking of double-digit growth owing to the giant strides they've already made. But virgin economies like that of Nigeria, if well-planned and policies purposefully executed, can achieve tremendous growth and development. Let's look at the global recession of the 1970s and how countries of the West maneuvered their ways out of it. The recession that began in 1974 was severe. The annual rate of inflation in some European countries at the time reached 20%. In Britain in 1975, the inflation rate was 27%. The economic situation in Britain during this period caused the Labour Party to lose the election that threw up the conservative Margaret Thatcher. The recession of the 1970s shook several countries. Production fell, economic growth slowed or even halted. By 1982, unemployment in the United States rose to 10.8% from a 1969 figure of 3.4%. The recession wasn't the problem of structural employment due to new methods of production that came with the improvement in technology. As a way to boost production, automation and high technology were employed 
displacing older and unskilled working population, leading to stagnation and inflation at the same time. The combination of inflation and stagnation during this period was dubbed stagflation by the media. This created unprecedented problems for government. One critical factor that triggered the worst end of the recession was the oil embargo, a fallout of the Arab-Israeli war of 1973. This was a time oil had displaced coal as the main source of energy to fire industrial complexes of advanced nations. In solidarity with their Arab brothers and sisters in Palestine and its allies suffering from Israel's military bombardment and occupation, the oil-producing countries of the Middle East, a bloc that controls the organization of petroleum exporting countries OPEC, bonded together to cut oil supply to the world market. They did not only cut supply, they also embargoed the shipment of oil to states accused of supporting Israel. By this action, the price of oil in the international market rose astronomically. The action of OPEC members coincided with the period the International Monetary Fund had difficulties and devalued the dollar. The oil war caused the big powers tremendous problems. It undermined their currencies. It accelerated inflation and increased the balance of payment deficits. It also interrupted their spectacular growth. You would recall that after World War II, following the United States launch of the Marshall Plan, the economies of the countries of Western Europe entered a period of boom, causing the expansion of the global economy. In 1974, after more than two decades of spectacular growth, the boom came to a sudden end. Before the embargo, there were indications that recession would set in, but the action of OPEC members precipitated it. Why the advanced countries suffered from the scarcity and high prices of oil in the international market, Nigeria, a member of OPEC, enjoyed more money. It was a period of boom for it, owing to the high prices of oil in the market. What did Nigeria do with the gains of the embargo? It frittered them away. Nigeria would later find itself in economic problems as the countries of America and Europe found their way out of the conspiracy of OPEC countries. Why the big powers tried to wriggle their way out of the embargo of 1973? Another surge in price occurred in 1979 following the revolution in Iran, causing that country to hot oil exports. In the 1980s, the Iran-Iraq war further worsened oil supply, leading to higher prices of the product. When the big powers could no longer take the resultant threat to the free movement of tankers in the Persian Gulf as a result of the Iran-Iraq war, they took naval action. According to some analysts, the United States and the West supported Iraq in the war against Iran to weaken the power of OPEC and have easy access to the oil in the Gulf. Beyond this, oil was also discovered in the North Sea, and Britain and Norway became exporters of the product. The Netherlands and other countries turned to gas. France turned to nuclear energy. Many countries initiated energy conservation measures, and the prices of oil in the market crashed. Then, Oil-producing countries like Nigeria ran into trouble. Recession set in in Nigeria, causing the military to overthrow the democratic government of Shehu Shagari and Major General Muhammadu Buhari became the head of state. Outside the oil strategy that crashed the price of the product in the international market, a country like Germany set its priority on controlling inflation. It kept interest rate high and rejected expansionist policies. Other countries followed the same track and inflation was brought under control. After this break, I'll be speaking with Henry Boyo on the ways to check inflation in Nigeria. The program is Economic Search Light. Don't go away.
Welcome back. The program is Economic Searchlight on Splash 105.5 FM, the Integrity Station. The Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria recently raised interest rates from 12 to 14 percent to encourage savings and investment. The committee also advocated for the diversification of the economy away from oil to manufacturing, agriculture, and services. Before raising the interest rate, the CBN had directed banks to review the provision for non-performing loans denominated in foreign currencies. This to the CBN would bolster its efforts to enhance efficiency, facilitate liquidity and transparency in the foreign exchange market. Henry Boyo, an economist, is of the view that the CBN is yet to solve the fundamental problem bedeviling the Naira. He predicts that the value of the Naira will continue to fall if his recommendations were not adopted. Henry Boyo, an economist on Economic Search Light. In your article entitled Sensible Path to Stronger Naira and Economic Prosperity, you frowned at the CBN unilateral determination of the exchange rate of the Naira. Today we talk about a flexible exchange rate policy, but it seems the Naira will not recover. What is still wrong? Uh, the CBN's uh, unilateral uh, substitution of dollar denominated revenue with Naira allocations. And these Naira allocations are determined uh, unilaterally and ultimately create or instigate the poison of excess liquidity. Excess liquidity that is the product of CBN's unilateral substitution of Naira allocations for dollar revenue becomes the reason why inflation becomes also uh, unacceptably high. Because the substitution of the Naira for dollar revenue, apart from the fact that it makes CBN a monopolist with all the uh, baggage, the horrible baggage that goes with the, the impact of monopolies on social welf- welfare of customers, in addition to that excess baggage of becoming a monopolist, the CBN also inadvertently determines a sealed fate of low value for the Naira because the Naira that has been substituted for dollar allocations makes it possible for CBN to accumulate reserves while simultaneously suffocating the money market with excess Naira, okay? In economics, everyone recognizes that too much money chasing too few goods will lead to inflation. So the additional supply of Naira that comes about as a result of CBN substituting Naira allocations for dollar revenue drives inflation. In its attempt to curb the level of price rise, the CBN would set about to reduce the Naira suffocation in the system. That process ensures that CBN would continue to borrow money it does not need at very exorbitant rates of interest while, conversely, the real sector that is in demand of cheap and uh, access to funds cannot access these funds. Consequently, you find that the banks enjoy doing business with government and the central bank rather than the real sector because CBN loans and government loans are risk-free. And when the rates are unusually high, it makes no sense from any bank whatsoever 
to say that I love the real sector so much, so let me go and lend money to them when it is easier for the bank to make much more money from the treasury bills which CBN sells and the government loans which the government also uh, borrows. Um, By the same token also, the excess liquidity is also responsible for your weak Naira exchange rate. Because when you have a market that is admittedly suffocated with Naira, according to CBN, which makes it have to uh, continue borrowing and mopping up forever. If you have a market that is already suffocated with Naira, and you then decide to auction dollars, not just auction dollars, auction rations of dollars against a huge surplus of Naira liquidity. The word auction is very key here. Anything that you auction, you'll be expecting to sell the item on auction for higher bids, not lower bids. So when the same central bank that has the monopoly of dollar supply in the country begins to sell rations of dollars, or put it this way, begins to auction rations of dollars in a market that is suffocated with Naira, it is not a uh, rocket science to understand that the fate of the Naira is deliberately sealed to weaken. So does the flexibility of the Naira in the exchange market matter at all in this analysis? Has it made any difference to the situation? If anything, it has made it worse. Look, what they are saying is that the exchange rate of the Naira is now being handled in the same manner that tomato is handled in the market. It's as simple as that. The price of tomato is a flexible uh, price. <laughs> it goes up with demand and supply. Consequently, if you accept that, then you will also understand the, the deeper insights that I'm bringing to the table. And that is that so long as you continue to auction, whether you call it flexible or whatever, to deceive people, so long as you continue to auction, again, I repeat the word, auction is very critical here, so long as you continue to auction rations of dollars, in a market that is already suffocated with Naira, there is no amount of dollars that you earn that would improve your lot. And you don't have to say prove it in Taboyo because the evidence is in front of you. When the price of food oil was 130, 100 and whatever barrels, uh, dollars per barrel, and we earned so much dollars that we had over 60 something billion dollars worth of reserves, our best ever. Did it help your exchange rate? No. If your exchange rate improved at all, maybe it improved by 1% or 2%, maximum 3%. So it would not be appropriate, therefore, for anyone to claim that the exchange rate depreciation or devaluation that we currently experience, or we are having to endure, is the result that, that it is the result of low foreign exchange earnings. That, nothing can be further than, from the truth than that. Anybody that functions anything wants to sell the item for higher bids. So if your own central bank is saying, I'm auctioning dollars, of course you won't sell it to people who are industrialists and serious-minded and know that it doesn't make sense to sell dollar for 300 naira or to buy dollar for 300 naira. But he would sell it to politicians and treasury looters who have stolen as much money and don't care what rate. rate. They bid for the Naira. So the looters and smugglers will be determining the rate at which the CBN auctions the dollar. Is it not true that auction can also make uh, the price of goods cheaper? Are we talking of auction in the true sense of reward? I'm not talking of stealing and dashing away government property. The program is Economic Search Light on Splash 105.5 FM, the Integrity Station. I am speaking with the economist Henry Boyo. Mr. Boyo writes for Nigerian newspapers on economic issues. Uh, Mr. Boyo, one of your recommendations, sir, is that the CBN should keep the dollars and give certificates, a dollar certificate equal to their respective allocations to those who need it. Do you think that is possible in the Nigerian system? 
Why is it not possible? Why is it when when people when the, the dollars belong to the federation? Okay, if the process whereby CBN is infusing the dollars into the system is creating high rates of inflation, high cost of funds, and a weaker naira exchange rate, shouldn't you be looking at other ways of ensuring that you don't auction the dollars, but you actually auction the naira so that you get a better price for the naira? In which case. If the beneficiaries of the dollar certificates go to the banks, this time the banks don't have excess naira on their hands because CBN has not inundated the accounts of beneficiaries of the federation code with naira surpluses. So you don't have excess liquidity that CBN has to grow more up or anything like that. Because no excess naira has been deliberately created by Central Bank and put in the system only for it to go back and mop it up again. Who is listening to Harry Boyo? Uh, well, I don't know. I don't care who is listening. Uh, what, I can't force anybody to, to understand the truth. But the truth remains constant. All the experts whom we have been listening to, they will tell you one thing tomorrow, today, tomorrow they will change because they are not certain of what they are saying. Tell me one person who is consistent on this issue. And tell me, if I had been saying nonsense, wouldn't they have torn me to pieces intellectually in some write-up or something? Huh? So I'm trying as much as I can, not because I have anything to gain, but I have a lot to gain in the sense that if our people become less poor and we become, we have a better social life, that would be my prize. From what is on ground, if nobody applies your recommendation, where do you see the Naira working we into? We will see Naira reaching 500 Naira to a dollar before the end of the year. And before the end of next year, we will see Naira touching 1,000 Naira. And I don't say this without reference. Go and check what happened in Ghana. It's the same problem of excess liquidity that grows their exchange rate to God knows what. Eventually, it is 40,000 cities to one, from one to one at one stage. So what happens to the poor man on the street? We are dead. That's the bottom line. That's, I mean, there's no two ways about it. I don't want to deceive people. You know, if you don't change the system, we, in fact, what has just happened is that we are now on a roller, co- a roller coaster down the slope. And uh, it, 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 <laughs> the naira would not be depreciating at the rate of uh, 10 naira plus 20 naira. No, no, no. It will start depreciating by in lease of 50 naira. And then 100 naira, and then when it gets to 1,000, it starts depre- uh, depreciating on 500 and 1,000 naira. Before you know it, will be talking of 5,000 naira to a dollar. That is the reality. I said this in 2004, and it has come to pass. You know, I said if we continue along this line, even if we end double or triple or quadruple the dollars we were earning before, it would not help the naira. It will continue to sink, and that has been the reality. You know, when we had dollars double, quadruple what we had earned before. It didn't mean anything to anybody. It didn't make any impact on the on the Naira exchange rate. So on that basis, you cannot say that it is small dollars that will make the Naira stronger. Because when we had more Naira, we paid more dollars, we paid off our IMF, um, Paris and London club loans. We had money, so much money, we were even throwing it to go the change. We, were, we said anybody wanted to travel abroad can go and send up to $150,000 abroad every year. You know, did it improve the Naira exchange rate? No, it stayed almost static. Uh, you know, uh, so anybody will tell you now that, ah, this, 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 unless we earn more dollars, the person is deceiving you because it doesn't happen that it will not happen so long as the CBN continues to auction the dollars, rations of dollars, in a market that the CBN has already made to be suffocated with excess Naira. It's uh, as simple as that. It's uh, just market dynamics. The federal government recently got a wake-up call on the budget and that call is that the implementation should be sped up to stimulate economic activities to bridge the output gap and create jobs and this advice came from the monetary policy committee of the cbn what do you have to say that is all hogwash you know a budget that was predicated first on eight trillion then it was scaled down to six trillion at a time that you knew that your sources of revenue had, scre- had even uh, crumbled to below 50%. Does that make sense to me? For you to have increased your budget by, oh, that's what that you even double it 100%. I'm trying to tell you that these people are careless, you know, that you first wanted to double it and increase it from 4.5 to almost 8 point something or the other. Better sense prevailed, and uh, you decided 6 trillion. Uh, 6 trillion. You can't, you, 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 you can't even make that up. 
You knew from the word go that it would be a challenge to get 6 point, 6, 6 point something trillion uh, in revenue, yet you made it. Why not accept the, the initial budget of uh, 4.5 that was uh, in 2014, 2015? You know, and start from there. That is what you call cautionary economics. Not just that you see, we will spend more money. Already, the mo- it is not more money that is the issue. Because if anything, if more money was the issue, then of course, CBN would not be mopping up excess liquidity. He would be allowing the liquidity to flow into the system rather than having to borrow it and keep the money and pay interest of 10, 11, 12 percent on it and increase NPR. Does it make sense for them to be increasing NPR to 16 percent? And automatically, therefore, instigate cost of funds to be reset to about 20 something percent. At the time that you are saying that you are expecting the real sector to get up and join the bandwagon of producing for the economy, where does the real sector get money? It's supposed to get it from the banks. And if the banks are charging 26 percent, 27 percent, and you expect that the real sector will produce competitively and drive away imported uh, substitutes, then of course you are living in cloud cuckoo. Because that can never happen. You can never produce at 26% we're using by borrowing at 26%, and then you are competing with goods that are coming from China and elsewhere, where the industrialists there have full power supply, and they are also obtaining loans at not just about 2 or 3.5%. Look, these things are not very serious. These things are not rocket science. But every, most Nigerians refuse to think. Mr. Henry Boyo, thank you for speaking on Economic Search Light. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Speaking there with Henry Boyo, an economist, he writes for Nigerian newspapers on economic issues. After this break, I'll be speaking with Dr. Igwema as he looks at Nigeria's economic situation. The program is Economic Search Light. Welcome back. Economic Searchlight on Splash 105.5 FM, The Integrity Station. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, recently said that the economy is going through rough times, but that the most important thing is that the country is going to get out of it. She said agriculture, which is the strategic focus of this government, has received 21.9 billion naira compared to just 4 billion in 2015. That 22 billion naira has been injected into the transport sector in 2016. She said these and more are measures to revive the economy. The head of the Department of Economics, Imo State University, Dr. Andrew Igwema, is not impressed with the APC government handling of the economy. Dr. Igwema, the Minister of Finance recently told the Senate that Nigeria is technically in recession. How do we take the economy out of the murky water it has found itself? When we talk of recession, we're talking of a situation where the economic theory says if there's no money, prices will fall. But in Nigeria today, there's no money. Prices are rising. That's a, a symptom of recession. Then, we are in need. Because what? Nigeria is dependent on oil. And because we are dependent on oil, and this oil now we have people disturbing the output, and even we are not meeting the quota. So first and foremost, there is need for us it comes with people in the Niger Delta, the military, reach a compromise where they will allow us to produce at least to meet the quota. That's why they fall in oil price. Two, there is need for us to diversify. Look into agriculture. What is happening there? Are we really producing? Look into the manufacturing sector. Most of the firms in the manufacturing sector are producing at zero, apple level. A lot of unemployment because they have retrenched. Output is almost zero. They're not exporting anything. When you think of the problems of the industrial sector, for instance, you think of the high exchange rate. Can they 
get their raw materials abroad or get some other input in production process abroad and at the same time produce at competitive rate. So you can think of the power sector, what is happening there. Okay, if you're running your own gen, your cost of production increases faster than when you are using the public energy system. That is going down too. The firms cannot cope. We're running the gen sense out of business. Three, the high interest rate. If you, know, you must have had a recent one increasing the interest rate day by the central bank. Then compared to this interest rate in increase, if what happens in the developed world, how will somebody produce at the increased interest rate and be competitive in the international market? But the CBN said that increase will allow for more savings and it will attract more investment. They are talking about savings. People in Nigeria don't save because of interest rates. What we have in Nigeria is what we call target savings. People save because of a project they have in mind. People in Nigeria do not save because the interest rate is high or low. No, 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 no. Nobody in Nigeria saves because interest rate is high or low. People save because they have a target. They have an objective they want to achieve. If I save this amount, I will draw and do this. So if they are saying that, it means that they are not on ground. Are you now saying that there is lack of understanding of the economic dynamics of the Nigerian state on the part of the APC political actors presently calling the short? Surely, surely, that's the truth. It may be bitter, but that's the truth. Because they, they covered the power today. I've not shown us a blueprint that following the economic blueprint to rescue us from this recession. Okay. It's not the issue of talking of corruption, 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 as if corruption is an agenda. It's not an agenda. It's not a blueprint. It is not a strategy for development. So, if we want to develop, there must be a strategy. There must be a blueprint that we are following. We will not tell anyone this present regime is following. So you cannot be talking of corruption, corruption. After all, if you look at the Nigerian environment, it even promotes corruption. If you don't pay staff for three months, do you think that the, the staff will be sincere? If you want corruption to go, first of all, you must pay the staff his wage. You must also pay living wage. I'm just talking at the at the micro level. I'm not talking of those who are calling our billions. But I'm thinking of the people. I'm thinking of the people at the micro level. Those who are working, civil servants. You have talked about diversification. You have talked about injecting energy into the manufacturing sector. You've mentioned the exchange rate. You've talked about the power sector. Do you see the Buhari government taking action in these areas you've mentioned? The central bank seems to have a, a misunderstanding with the executive arm. Because I read where Buhari is not being happy with the, the central bank um, devaluing the Naira or taking what we call the floating exchange rate system. For those of us economics know that you take up the floating exchange rate system to help the economy when you strongly believe that we are producing something. But let me ask, what is Nigeria producing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Except the oil. Which is price and even the quota is not within our dictate. But at a time when the president and the CBN insisted on a rigid foreign exchange pattern, economists came out critiquing the system, saying you must allow markets to determine the exchange rate. What we have in this country is a situation where when issues come up, even lay people talk. Even people who do not know their left and right in that aspect talk. And most of all, we listen to politicians who do not even have the skill to decipher what is wrong or right. That is our biggest problem. But 
we know that we may not face very rigid or fixed exchange rate regime because we made the first mistake when we allowed um, our exchange rate to float. And the developed countries, remember in the uh, before 1986, when Naira was more powerful than the dollar, the development we were not happy because they knew we were not politically related. They forced us. And then our people succumbed to that. And we started talking of the closing exchange rate regime. And before that, before you know it, we're now 100 and 200 and 300 and Naira to a dollar. This is not very good. But we can have what we call the managed floating exchange rate regime. Where the exchange rate is managed, it will be allowed to float, but managed to float. Is that not what we, ha- is that not what we have now? No. We're not managing it. It's a situation we have free floating exchange rate. But this is going up. And it has not stopped. Because we don't have we don't have anything. We don't have anything to export. And even the little lawyer that will help us get the foreign exchange. And the government is not doing anything. All we're hearing is that we will attack them. If we attack them, have we succeeded in doing what we want to do? Every day we hear of destroying the the illegal refinery. Can't we legalize the illegal refinery? In the final analysis, do you see this economy bouncing back soon? For now, I've not seen any serious economic policy by the present regime. I've not seen any. We need a strong economic team that will tell the nation. If I was surprised by the minister's statement, going to tell the, the senators and that we Nigeria is in trouble, we should back up this and that technically in recession. He's fighting us the more. And you know fear is a very big problem. I thought she would have told us that the government is doing this, 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 this to take care of the economy. At least to give us some elements of hope. Yes, she did that. She listed measures the government is taking in the agricultural sector trying to pump money into infrastructure and all that. What have we seen in infrastructure? What have they done? When we talk of infrastructure in terms of development, energy is the, the most important. Energy is in the hands of so, the private sector. Even if it's a price of the, uh, in the hands of the private sector, what has government done to it? Let me tell you one, give you one example. In my village today, a transformer packed up, and we met those people for transfer. They said we can wait for two years, three years. Today, my village is contributing to buy transformers. But we're in the country. So what is the government doing to regulate? Even if when we hand off, hands off these things and give to the private sector, there's need for government regulatory agencies to monitor what they're doing. Because the more we, like Kamal said, if you continue to increase this reserve army, that the revolution will be somewhere. They consider the rate of unemployment. People graduate in hundreds of thousands every year, no job. Nigeria cannot talk of creating new jobs. Now that we are retrenching. So what policies are we making? And these policies for new jobs must be for those in the industrial sector. How are we helping them? The agri sector, we say we are banning this or banning that. How do you buy with immediate attack? There should be a program four or five years before you ban a particular product so that we'll be able to produce it here in Nigeria and be able to substitute. But where you ban, we cannot substitute what you have banned. What happens? Smuggling comes up. Wow. No, I'm not in any strong policy. Uh, Dr. Andrew Iguema, thank you for featuring on Economic Search Light. Thank you very much. Speaking there with Dr. Andrew Iguema, he is an associate professor of economics, Imo State University. This is the point to wrap up this edition of Economic Search Light. Your comments are always appreciated. My Twitter account is at e obilo, at e obilo, so you can leave your comments there. For text and WhatsApp messages, the number is zero eight zero triple nine. 
1-844-9-18-449. I was assisted by the sound engineer, Blessed Akum, to bring you this package. I am Edmond Dobilo. Thank you for listening.